Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to find or create your own course on the Garmin Connect website and then send it to your device so you can follow that course. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to connect.garmin.com and log into our account. Now note that I'm showing you on the website, but this is something you can also do on the Garmin Connect app. Uh, maybe in the future I'll do a video to show you how to do it on an app. Most things like this I prefer doing on the website. To me it's just a little bit easier to navigate, especially what, what we're going to get into later is we're going to be drawing the course. I just think it's easier to click with the mouse versus using your finger on a little phone. Anyway, enough about that. Once we're in Garmin Connect, we'll be on our dashboard. On the left-hand side, we're going to click on Training. That'll open up the Training submenu, and then we're going to click on Courses. So a course is basically a set of waypoints that you follow in order to create a course. Now, when you go in, you might see this message here, would you like to let connect.garmin access your location? That's up to you. If you allow it, it'll basically bring the map up based on the location that you're sitting in with your Wi-Fi. If you don't want to allow it, that's fine too. You can simply type in the location here. You can type in a specific address or you can be as general as you want. So for example, in this video, let's say we're going to Washington, D.C. and we want to lay out a course of locations that we want to hit and basically go walk around and check out those locations. So I'm just going to type in Washington, D.C. And I'm going to do a search, and it's basically going to bring up the map. It kind of drops you into the center of the location that you search for. Now, there's a couple different things here. You'll notice that there's nothing on my map. If I wanted to, I could click on Nearby Courses, and it will show me all of the courses that are available on the given map that I'm looking at. Now, these are courses that are created by other users, and they were made public for everybody to see. You can click on any one of these to see the details. So if I want to click on this one, they didn't title it, it's untitled. It's a 0.34 miles, 20 foot elevation gain. And then you can see on the map where this course is going. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that. Now note, because these are created by users, a lot of times they're not very good. So you can see in this one, they didn't even give it a title. So I'm gonna close that, but I did wanna show you that you could go look at other people's courses and then you could send any of those to your device and do that course if you want to. But in today's video, we're going to create our own course. So I'm gonna click on Create It By You. That's the section that we wanna be under. And then I'm gonna do Create A Course. You'll notice I don't have any courses here, but once we build them, we'll start seeing some. So I'm gonna do Create A Course. Now you've got a couple different options here. You can choose what type of course it's gonna be. All this is really gonna do is impact the icon that's gonna be on the course itself. So I'm just gonna do other, but if you know it's gonna be a running course or a bike riding or cycling course, you can choose the appropriate one. Anything we choose here, we can always go back and edit. And then you've got some options as far as the type of course. Custom means you're gonna have a starting point and an end point. Round trip means you're gonna have a starting point and then you're gonna come back to that starting point and that's where you'll end. So we're just gonna do custom and now we're ready to start beginning to build our course. So anywhere on the map, we're just gonna click where we wanna start. So let me find a good spot. This looks like a good spot. Let's do DuPont Circle. We're going to start in DuPont Circle. Then we've got a couple different options. We can follow roads or we can do freehand. Follow roads means no matter where I click, it will always keep me on a road to get to that destination. So I'm going to click right here. And you'll notice it drew this automatically. It said follow these roads to get to that area. Now I can drag them any way I want to. So if I just want to do something more like that, I can play around with NC. Now, I'm not real familiar with this area, so apparently it's not liking the way I'm clicking and dragging them. I'm gonna undo it. Freehand basically means it's gonna build the course and it doesn't care if there's a road there or not. It'll send you through private property, the woods, a river, anything. So if I do freehand and I click there, it just draws a straight line. Again, you can tell by looking at the straight line that most of it doesn't follow a road at all. So that's the difference between following roads and freehand. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna undo this. Now let's go ahead and start building it out. Let me zoom my map back out. Let's say we wanna go here, and then we wanna go here. You'll notice as we're clicking, it's building our course over here. So currently we're at 0.88 miles. We've gained 29 feet in elevation, and we're gonna lose 85 feet in elevation. I can always click undo if I want to. So if that doesn't look good to me, maybe I want to go over here instead. We can do that. 
And basically, you're just going to draw it out the way you want to. Currently at 1.52 miles, that seems pretty good. So let's say our course looks good here. We're ready to save it. This is what we saw earlier when we looked at the other person's map, uh, their course, they didn't uh, name it. You can click on the pencil out to the right and you can edit it. So we're gonna call this Washington Tour. You can see my distance, you can see my elevation gain, my elevation loss. If we like that title, we're just gonna click on save. And then we are going to save our new course. Now, before we save it, you'll notice that it's currently private, which means only I can see it. If we did want to make it public so that everybody who goes on Garmin Connect can find this course, we would just click on Make Public. I'm going to leave it as private, and I'm going to save my course. It kind of shows us a view of our course. Again, we can zoom in or zoom out on the map. I'm going to close this, and now you'll notice that before, where I had no courses that have been created, I've got a course called Washington Tour. If I wanted to send this course to my device, all I have to do is click on it to bring it up, and at the bottom here, I can do Send to Device. Now, this is a little bit misleading. It should bring up all of the devices that you have availability to send it to. Mine says Launch Garmin Express. You can choose whether you want to launch Garmin Express or not. If you've got a Bluetooth enabled device, you really don't need to worry about Garmin Express. It'll even tell you that you need it, but you don't have to. I'm going to do Send to Device. The next time I sync my Garmin Instinct, this course will go to it. Now, if you've got an older device, like I've got a Garmin eTrex 10 that doesn't do Bluetooth, then you would need to have uh, Garmin uh, Express in order to get that course on your device. But that's it. We've created a course. Next time I sync my device, I'll see that course on my device and we're ready to go do our course. It's very easy. It's fun to play with. Build you a course, send it to your device, do the course on your device, and then you can mark it as a favorite if you want by uh, clicking here. If you decide ah, that course wasn't very good, you want to get rid of it, you can simply delete it and remove it from your courses. As always, I hope the video helps, at least it gives you an idea of how courses work on the Garmin Connect website. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments. Be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.